I am so, so excited to finally be able to share with you all the pieces that I picked up and discovered in London. As I mentioned to you in my original vlogs, which if you haven't seen, I'll make sure to link down below for you. I didn't do that much actual shopping in London. It was more about enjoying the city, spending time with my friends and window shopping for a few reasons, which I think I mentioned those in my vlogs too, but most boutiques didn't have that much in stock. And even if they did, they really didn't have the full size range. I only traveled with a carry-on, which meant that I didn't have that much space to physically bring things back. And then three, most things were more expensive in pounds. And I just figured what's the point of me spending more money than I have to when I can just wait a couple of days and then order things when I get back. So that's why it's taken me so long to film this. I had to wait for most things to arrive. And there are actually two more things missing, which I'll share some pictures with you at the end. And of course, I'll come back and share them with you whenever they arrive. But without further ado, if you'd like to see all the beautiful pieces that I picked up in London and one gigantic fail, which is a new bag from Bottega that I cannot wait to hear your thoughts on because my review is not going to be very kind. But without further ado, if you'd like to see everything, then make sure to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe down below if you haven't done so yet, and keep on watching. Before moving on to the real larger ticket pieces, I wanted to share with you some of the smaller bits that I picked up in London in case you watch my vlogs and you're wondering what else I bought. These are the things that I physically picked up while I was there. So one of the first places that I went to was actually the Glossy flagship where I had never been to. I've been to the one in New York quite a few times, but never the one in London. But this time there wasn't a line outside, so I thought I might as well stop by because I do actually quite like Glossier skincare. So I had to pick up one of my favorite moisturizers, which is Glossier's Balm.com. I think I talked about this. I think, was it in my skincare video maybe? I think it was. So if you want to find out more about this, I'm sorry, this is not called the bomb.com. This is called the after bomb. And we'll move on to the bomb.com in a second. This is the most beautiful, rich hydrating moisturizer. If you have dry skin, run and get this now and thank me later. You're going to love this. It's a really cocooning, soothing, beautiful moisturizer without it being overly suffocating or too thick or too greasy. I love this. I always have one on backup, so I'm glad that I was able to pick up one of these. And then I also had to buy some of my favorite lip balms, which I'll make sure to link all of these things down below. If you love a good lip balm and you haven't tried these, you're missing out. They are amazing lip balms, really fairly priced, and they come in a ton of fun flavors. Let's just put it that way. They're technically tinted, but I've tried almost all the different colors and I don't have an issue wearing any one of them, even though I don't or a lipstick or anything along those lines. And they're just really, really subtly tinted. I think it's more about the flavors than the actual tints. So this time I bought, I think I bought three new flavors, which I haven't tried before. I bought their latest addition to the collection, which is their chocolate flavored, flavored lip balm. It's not my favorite. It tastes kind of artificial and not in a good way. I'm going to use it up, but I wouldn't recommend it. I did also buy the cookie dough one, which I really like. It tastes more like peanut butter. That one is a really, really good one to have, which I think should be in one of my bags. And then I also bought the coconut flavored one, which was my favorite, but I ended up giving that to my friend who I was traveling with so she can enjoy it and she loves everything coconut. So I would definitely consider buying the coconut one again. The cookie dough I also like, the chocolate, I would just stick to my favorite rose flavor. But if you have not tried these, get some of these because they are some of the best most reasonably priced lip balms. So this is what I bought from Glossier. Another thing that was on my wish list or things to hunt down while I was in London was actually Marks and Spencer's cashmere. I lived in Scotland for a couple of years and my most favorite grocery store, I should say that my most favorite store while living there was Marks and Spencer, but I've never actually tried the clothing that they do and there is someone online that always talks about how amazing Marks and Spencer's cashmere is. I can't remember who it is. I think it might be, I'll link them down below if I can remember who it was. I don't wanna say who it is, but I definitely have heard someone rave about Marks and Spencer's cashmere. So 
you guys know I love cashmere pieces, so I had to pick up a couple of their pure cashmere, just really simple crew neck sweaters, which come in a ton of different colors and sizes. Of course, I had to opt for black, and I actually bought two different sizes, so I bought them in medium, which is this one, and then I also bought it in a size small, just because I wasn't sure about the sizing. And I have to say, both of them work for me. This is definitely a little bit more fitted, and then the medium is a little bit more relaxed, but I think I could get away with either one of them. There isn't that big of a difference. So if you haven't tried Marks and Spencer's cashmere, definitely give it a look. It is really, really, really soft. If you're interested in my review on these, I would say that they're really soft. They're reasonably priced. I think they were 99 pounds each, which I thought was a great price for cashmere. As I said, they come in a ton of different colors. I tried this. I tried, I think they had a Bordeaux, they had an ivory, and then they had maybe a navy, because I was either going to get black or gray. I didn't see gray, so I ended up going for black. They're really, really soft. I don't know how they're going to wear and wash. I'll have to keep you posted on that. But one thing that I do have to say is that they are insanely thin. Not as thin as the next piece that we'll move on to, but as far as traditional cashmere jumpers or pullovers go, these are pretty thin. I mean, I wouldn't really compare these to my Saint Laurent cashmere, which is not a bad thing. To me, these are almost like, you know how you have your favorite black staple t-shirts in your collection for spring, summer? I think these are going to be just like that, but for fall, winter, these are more sort of layering pieces rather than things that you can wear on their own. These are not chunky, these are not thick, they are incredibly warm and soft, but you definitely want to layer these with other pieces in your collection. So these are kind of like a great basic staple to have instead of wearing a simple black t-shirt that you would in spring, summer, you're going to put these on instead. And you can definitely put like a Uniqlo thermal t-shirt underneath it. You can put something from Skims underneath it, which I mentioned Skims because we'll move on, move on to them next. And then you can easily layer things on top. You could even put like a chunky cardigan over this, definitely a winter coat and so on. So. Just keep that in mind, this is more of a basic staple rather than something that you would necessarily want to wear on its own in my experience, which is exactly why I bought them in two different sizes, just so I can play around with how and what I wear them with. And I am pretty happy with them so far. I haven't worn the medium size one yet, but I have worn the small one a couple of times, as you can probably tell, because it's covered in thighs fur, but I'm pretty, really happy with these purchases and would definitely recommend. I think I said that we're going to talk about Skims next, so why don't we do that? I did buy two pieces from Skims. Well, I tried them on in London as Selfridges, and then I had them ordered. And in case you're not aware, Skims is Kim Kardashian's clothing or more like underwear line. They started out by doing, I think, shapewear and underwear for women but they have recently launched a range of unisex pieces in their boyfriend collection, which I feel like any time I hear about Skims, it's almost always a rave review. Everyone seems to love her pieces. So I was intrigued to try some of her pieces. And when I found out that they have this boyfriend collection, I thought I have to try their t-shirts because I consider myself to be a designer t-shirt connoisseur, because let's be honest, I, I don't want to say that I have bought a t-shirt from every single brand out there, but there are very few that I haven't bought a t-shirt from because I do love a good, simple, basic t-shirt. So I wanted to give some of her t-shirts a try and I got to try, I think they had a couple of colors in London, but only one size, which I do have to say just from the get-go that these t-shirts are incredibly oversized. For size reference, I took a small in her t-shirts if that helps you, I'm usually a medium or a large in men's t-shirts and their line is unisex. So just do keep in mind that they're going to be quite oversized. And I think the reason why they're quite oversized or the reason why they have a wider size range is because her t-shirts, I don't want to say that they are form hugging, but there's definitely a fit to them. They're not those t-shirts that you just put on and you will be drowning in fabric, there is a little bit of hold to them. I mean, they are not shaper by any means, but they're going to almost mold to your shape. So just do keep that in mind. I ended up buying two different colors of her long sleeve t-shirts. So I bought her Onyx, which is kind of her take on black. 
which is the only one complaint that I have that they don't have a true black in these t-shirts. They have this color called Onyx, which looking at the screen there, it does look kind of black, but in real life, I can tell you that it's not, especially when you have it side by side with a real black piece. It's almost somewhere between black and charcoal. It's not quite as gray as charcoal, but it's definitely not a true black. And that's the only complaint that I have. And then I also bought their traditional, I think it's called the dark gray color, both of them in the long sleeve in size small. And I have to tell you, I love these t-shirts. These might be some of my new favorite t-shirts because they are unbelievably comfortable. They are super stretchy. There is quite a bit of stretch to them. I don't even think I own any t-shirts quite like these. The closest thing that I could compare these to would be a brand called ATM. Have you guys ever heard of ATM? It's a brand that I was in love with for years. I used to get them from Barney's in New York and they are the only brand that had t-shirts similar to these, but those were, I want to say a couple hundred dollars a piece, whereas these I paid maybe 50 or 60 euros for, so they were really not anything ridiculous and they are unbelievably comfortable. I'm not exactly sure if you could dress these up. I think these are definitely more on the casual side, but if you're looking for a super comfortable t-shirt just to stop with a pair of jeans and throw a blazer over, a leather jacket, a denim jacket, or if you just want some really comfy t-shirts to wear at home, these I would not overlook. Honestly, I was really, really impressed by how they feel. I haven't washed these. I haven't really worn them. I mean, I have worn this once for an hour or two and I didn't want to wash it before coming um, on here to talk to you guys about these. But so far, I'm pretty impressed. I'm planning on buying a couple more of these in their more neutral shades, which they can be quite tough to find depending on what size you're looking for because obviously the Kardashian hype always sells them out and I don't have anything for or against the Kardashians. I didn't buy these because of the brand name. I bought it because I've heard so many people talk about how amazing Skims is and I have to be honest, I'm really, really impressed by these. I mean, are these the most incredible t-shirts that I have ever bought? No, they are not. I still prefer my Prada t-shirts, but if I only had these and my Prada t-shirt in my collection, well, I should say Prada t-shirts because I would need a few of them, I would be perfectly fine. And last but not least, before we move on to my two latest online purchases, I wanted to show you one more thing that I picked up in London, which is from the brand Joseph. Joseph is a brand that I haven't really bought anything from in ages. I mean, it's not like I was ever one of, one of their biggest customers, but I do have a couple of pieces here and there that I bought over the years. I really appreciate Joseph's aesthetic. They are definitely more of a minimalist brand. I would compare them to maybe a brand like Jill Sander or High End Theory. They do have some incredible pieces, but you're definitely paying a premium for them. Although I have to say that the quality is outstanding and they're a brand that's quite well known for its cashmere. So I ended up buying this cashmere sweater, which when I said that the MS sweaters are thin, I mean, this is next level. This is almost like a piece of tissue paper. I mean, it is genuinely paper thin and quite see-through. This is definitely not one of those things that you could wear on its own because I mean, you could, I guess, but everything is going to be on display, which if that's your aesthetic, more power to you. But personally, that's not why I bought it. I was thinking that this would be the perfect layering piece. If I want to add just a little bit more texture to an outfit, I'm thinking that if I want to wear a blazer that I want to fasten up, but I want something to show through the sleeves, or if I want to just have a nice little pop of color, I mean, Yes, to me, it is a pop of color showing through the buttons of the blazer. This would be an amazing piece to have underneath it. And I have to tell you that this might be the softest cashmere that I have ever felt. It's almost like a baby's little cheek. It's not comparable to any other cashmere piece that I own in terms of the fit, in terms of the opacity, and definitely not even the feel, because I'm telling you, this is almost completely see-through so do keep that in mind but it is a great classic to have and I believe Joseph does this almost every single season it's one of their classics these really really paper thin cashmere pieces which do come in a ton of different colors of course I had to go for a neutral but you can choose from I mean a huge range of beautiful shades 
but I'm really excited to start wearing this and I'm thinking I'm probably going to wear this. I was thinking about wearing it with that vintage Chanel blazer that I bought last year. Do you guys remember that? If you've been with me since then, let me know in the comment section. But I was thinking that this would be the perfect match to wear with that old blazer. Of mine. And finally, it's time for us to move into our true luxury purchases, which I bought four different things, only two of which are here. And those two are kind of a fail, I have to be honest. So why don't I start with the pieces that are not here yet, which I'm sure you're not going to be shocked by. I bought two pieces from the Pro online. I bought the knitted sweater with the long sleeves, which I showed in my vlog that I am just completely in love with. It might be one of the most beautiful knitwear pieces that I have ever seen, but unfortunately it's been completely sold out online and in store they only had a medium and I actually had to get it in a small, surprisingly, because I am rarely, if ever, a small, but I did have to get it in a smaller size. But I have a suspicion that it's only pre-order. When I bought it, I could still add it to my cart, but shortly after it just said that it was only available for pre-order. So I'm hoping that my piece will come in soon. I'll make sure to link it down below for you because even if it's only pre-order, I would recommend that you add it to your cart or add it to your wish list because it is just one of the most unique knitwear pieces that genuinely I have ever seen. And if you have been wanting to give the roll a try, I think it would be an amazing piece to start with because it is so true to the brand and the ethos and aesthetic of the row. But at the same time, it is a little bit more unique than just some of their classic basic pieces, which yes, they are basic, but they're great basics to have. Whereas this piece, yes, you can style it as a basic piece, but you can also make it really interesting, fun, and unique. So that I think would be an amazing starter piece. And then I also ordered the gray pants, which I tried on, which I'm hoping that they're going to ship, even if the sweater is not available yet. I'm thinking that they're holding those together, waiting for the sweater to come in, which I know it's my fault. I should really get in touch with customer service, but I haven't even thought about that until I sat down to tell you guys about them. But those two things are coming, and as soon as they are here, of course, I will have to share them with you. But let me show you the two pieces that are actually here, both of which are kind of a fail. So let me show you this belt really quick, which I never actually looked at in London. I wanted to, but honestly, there was just so much going on, I completely forgot about it. I was overwhelmed by all the beauty of the roll store which I would just say, I think I said this in my previous video, when it comes to the row, any one of their ready to wear pieces has my stamp of approval, but when it comes to leather goods and accessories, I really don't think that they are on par with other brands that charge similar prices because this piece is kind of underwhelming. I have been telling you guys that I want a really simple understated belt and I thought that this would be perfect which is the rose so-called jewel belt, which is a really, really simple design. It just has this large oversized metal buckle with a really, really simple strap, but the quality is pretty underwhelming. I mean, don't get me wrong, it is a soft leather, but it does kind of feel plasticky. It definitely does not feel like an Hermes belt, and I know that my standards are really high, but this is not that much less expensive than an Hermes belt would be. And because of that, I have a feeling that I might just return it. Even though I love the design, I love the simplicity. I just have a hard time justifying the price for this current quality. But if you love the way it looks, it does come in three different sizes. So it doesn't come in your traditional length. Instead, it comes in a small, a medium and a large. And for reference, I ended up getting a large in this, which I have to say it's a pretty good size. I usually take an 85 or a 90 centimeter belt in Hermes. And I think this, I think was maybe 500 euros, just a little over 500 euros. And then my Hermes belt that I picked up recently was 700. And I'm thinking I would much rather just put this money towards getting another belt from Hermes, maybe the same belt that I bought in suede. I could get that in black. And I think that would last a lot longer in my collection, which, it is a nice belt. I do like the way it looks, but I think for the price, it is just a little bit overpriced. So maybe I'll remove the sticker and show it to you guys in the product shots. But for now, full transparency, I do think that it is a belt that will be going back because honestly, it's something that you could probably buy from a really, really simple brand. And as I said in my previous video, 
I just don't think that the rows, it just doesn't feel like their accessories, their shoes, their bags are made by the same company as they're ready to wear, considering the quality, the cuts, the fits, the materials used. It is beautiful. I cannot point out one thing that I don't love about it, but when you touch this belt, it just doesn't feel like a 500 euro belt to me personally. If you have any experience with the rose accessories, I cannot wait to hear your thoughts and your experience. But to me, when I got this, I was just really, really underwhelmed by it. Honestly, guys, I'm kind of ashamed to even show you this. This is so... I mean, you just have to laugh about it because this piece came in the same box as my row belt. The belt I didn't get directly from the row and this I didn't get directly from Bottega. I got them from the same company and they came in the same box. I opened the belt and I was like, you know, it's not my favorite, but at least I'm sure I'm going to love the bag. And then I opened this Bottega bag and it genuinely felt like something I bought from Amazon for like $20. And I immediately took a picture of it and sent it to my friend who knows everything about Bottega. And even she was like, you need to return this. This needs to go back. It looks so insanely cheap. And it's not a cheap bag. I would love for you to guess how much you think it costs just based on how it looks. If you didn't know it was a Bottega bag, you just saw it walking down the street. How much do you think this bag would cost? I'll open it in a second and I cannot. Just please give me a number in the comment section. I just want to hear your honest thoughts because my guess is that it would be max a $100 bag it is not worth a penny more than that. So this is definitely going back. The roll belt, I'm still considering. I just want to see what I can pick up from Hermes, but this I am definitely not keeping, even though it's something that I have been looking for for quite a while. And my plan was to actually pick this up in London, but they didn't have it, even though it would have been perfect. But if this was what I wanted it to be, it would have been perfect for me to be able to bring it back because it is a duffel bag. And as you guys know, if you've been watching my videos, I have been on the hunt for the perfect elegant gym bag. Well, not elegant, but I just wanted a nicer take on a gym bag because I have been carrying my Birkin 35 to the gym, which, I mean, don't get me wrong, it doesn't get any better than that, but it just doesn't make the best gym bag. I'm quite nervous putting it in a tiny little locker when it's made of leather, I don't want to scratch it, I don't want to mark it, and I don't know how comfortable I feel, you know, just carrying my dirty bottles and my dirty shoes in a Birkin. I respect my bags a little bit more than that, but I mean, they were made to be used right. That's what I'm trying to come to terms with. So in the meantime, that will do, but I do want to upgrade to a gym bag that is just a little bit more worry-free, and in theory, this seemed like the perfect bag, but they didn't have it in London. So I actually placed an order for this, while I was in London and it has just arrived, which is, you can probably guess, it is going to be a large duffel bag by Bottega, which first of all, I don't know why they don't have any larger dust bags than the one that they sent this in, but it is this gigantic canvas duffel bag, which actually has an oversized pouch bag inside. So you guys know the Bottega pouch bag that people have been going crazy for. That's what this piece is inspired by. So you basically have an oversized pouch that is held together with this canvas handle and this canvas little bit over here. But I cannot tell you how cheap this whole thing feels, which I mean, I didn't expect this to feel like a Birkin. Obviously, I knew going into it that it was going to be a canvas bag. And then the pouch itself is made of like a terry cloth towel material. But even as a towel, you wouldn't want to use this. I mean, I can guarantee that you can buy, speaking of London, I can guarantee that you can buy a higher quality towel from Primark than how this feels. The whole thing just feels so incredibly cheaply made and the idea is that it's a huge tote bag because it fully fully opens up and then you can completely open the pouch and pretty much open it up flat there is a little pouch bag inside which i'm not sure how much this adds to this whole experience which i mean honestly this pouch might be the nicest part about this bag because this feels really squishy and really soft. I like the zipper. I like that the zipper even has a little Bottega triangle detail. So I do like the pouch bag, but I'm not spending, I mean, almost $3,000 on a pouch bag like this because the bag itself is, 
I mean, is it the worst thing that I have ever seen or I have ever experienced? No, it's definitely not. I mean, if you really don't care about how much you spend on one of these bags, if you just want a bag that you can take on a boat, you can take to the beach, and after a season or two, you can throw it away, you're going to like it. There is nothing wrong with that. But for 2000 I can't remember the exact price, two or $3,000, I feel like you can do so much better. I mean, this to me does not feel like a bag that is just simply worth that kind of money. So this bag will be going back. It does also come in leather, which I'm kind of tempted by because I do love the shape. I do love the idea. It is kind of exactly what I'm looking for, but do I want to risk after having such a disappointing experience with this bag? Do I want to spend, I think that leather version of this is almost seven or eight thousand dollars something along those lines do i want to risk then spending that kind of money i mean i guess i could always order it review it for you guys we can look at it together we can unbox it and if i don't like it what's the worst thing i can send it back so if that's something you would like to see let me know i can take a bullet for the team but this i mean is i cannot believe that bottega approved this to be sold because it genuinely feels like something you got for a hundred dollars but i'm excited to hear what you guys have to say what do you think it is definitely going back like there is no question about that i don't even know what else i can say i mean there is a pocket on the outside here i don't think that there are any pockets on the inside it just basically fully opens up like this and it is genuinely a bottomless hole i mean this could fit pretty much an entire family in there so if you're looking for a super soft super squishy kind of unstructured gym bag and you don't mind spending the money because you're going to throw it away after a season or two anyway you go for it but personally i think i can do so much better with this kind of money and then oh i thought you might be able to take out this whole pouch but you cannot you can on do the buckles there but then what does that do not much because so it basically has these two buttons up here that you can undo but then the rest of the pouch is sort of stitched onto the bag i don't even know what to tell you guys i'm just so confused by this whole thing i'm confused by how it works i'm confused by the quality i'm confused by how Bottega allowed this to go into production and i'm confused i'm probably most confused by how they can charge thousands and thousands of dollars for something like this even though i love the design and i love the idea unfortunately the execution is just really quite disappointing but my friends this is the end of today's luxury haul which might be the biggest fail that we've ever had on this channel before i cannot wait to hear you guys' thoughts on my Bottega piece which is definitely going back there's no question about that but I cannot wait to hear what you have to say about that and then let me know what you think about the row belt should I keep it should I take it back I mean there's nothing really wrong with it it's just a little bit overrated for what it is I feel like but I cannot wait for my ready to wear pieces to come in and as soon as I have them you guys of course will be the first to know I'll either do a reel of them on Instagram or I'll come on here and I'll include them in an upcoming unboxing of mine but I have to say that everything else I really like I love the glossy lip bumps which I'll link down below for you I adore the Skims t-shirts if you're gonna buy anything from this vlog get the Skims t-shirts I just love them and then, but please don't forget that they run quite large. So my size was a small in them, if that gives you a reference. And then I do love the m and Cashmere. If you're ever at m and definitely give their Cashmere a try because for 99 pounds, you could do a lot worse with your money. But this is everything I bought in London. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you haven't seen the vlogs, I'll make sure to have everything linked down below for you. And while you're down there, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't done so yet. I really appreciate you being here and watching and I hope to see you back here with a new video really, really soon.